Hi, I'm Zahra Ertmendi from York University and today I'd like to present benchmark dataset of ultra-wideband radio-based UAV positioning on behalf of the QDRON team in a 2030 International Conference on Intelligent Transportation Systems. There are many application fields in which UAV can complement or replace the existing labor-intensive practices especially infrastructure inspection, which can include bridges, pipelines, electrical grids, and other facilities. It is crucial for structure usage and safety, yet it is expensive, time-consuming, and dangerous. Fortunately, new professional-grade drone inspection technologies can help reduce these challenges. Positioning of the UAV is essential. One of the critical roadblocks in positioning is unreliable accessibility to GNSS signals, which is the primary source of UAV positioning. GNSS can be blocked in indoor space or cause significant errors when it operates near to vertical assets or in the urban canyon. To overcome these deficiencies, many researchers have been actively studying ultra-wideband known as UWB ranging data for achieving a precise positioning of UAV in both indoor and outdoor environments. As a leading-edge radio frequency technology, UWB sensor can potentially provide centimeter-level accuracy over up to 1 km with a high data rate. UWB can increase immunity to interference due to lower spectral power density and robust to multipath propagation. In this study, we present a unique UWB benchmark dataset called QDRON UWB Benchmark. QDRON system, a UAV with UWB network built at York University, was used for acquiring this benchmark over five different sites, which include an indoor open sports field near to a building with glasses, semi-open tunnel, and underneath bridge. The benchmark data were acquired by flying for a total of 1 hour and 50 minutes flight time and about 4.3 km traveling distances with different maneuvering patterns and a special configuration between UAV and UWB anchors as shown in the table. Since 2005, the Federal Communications Commission authorized and set the regulation on the UWB systems for unlicensed use. Ever since, Using UWB sensors for positioning of a moving platform has generated a lot of interest and is considered in many research works. Positioning with UWB is often referred to as a 3D position estimation problem using UWB ranges. Also, using another sensor alongside UWB like inertial and visual sensors is considered to achieve a higher positioning accuracy. In recent years, several research groups have made their efforts to make UWB data available in public research domains. It is worth mentioning that despite a large number of previous research works investigating UWB-based positioning methods, to our best knowledge, there is no benchmark dataset available for supporting the UAB positioning research in both indoor and outdoor environments. Having access to benchmark datasets is necessary to validate and compare novel methods based on the standard ground. For acquiring the UWB benchmark, we have been developing a UAV system called QDRONE. We designed the QDRONE system for conducting engineering inspection to generate 3D assets and detect anomalies in a GNSS-denied environment. The QDRONE system aims to achieve UWB-based positioning, dynamic path planning, automated quality assessments, and computer vision-based anomaly detection. The current QDRONE system used in this study enables UWB-based positioning based on post-graph optimization and multilateration techniques. The system was built based on DJI Matrix 100. This platform mounts our payload, which consists of UWB tag, Intel NUC computer, and the battery. The figure shows a configuration of the QDRONE system. In this experiment, we used a total of five Pulsan modules. UWB anchors have four UWB tags mounted on tripods at different heights in a square shape arrangement on the ground. By using time of flight method, it can provide distance measurement between two or more sensors. To have ascertainable and reliable data to validate positioning methods, we use a robotic total station, which is a discontinued prism tracking total station. One mini prism was mounted on the UAV 
and the total station actively tracked it using a modulated infrared light wave. Flight platform of DJI Matrix 100 can be customized through an onboard software development kit SDK provided by DJI. The mounted NUC computer using robot operating systems was connected to the UAV. The SDK allows the computer to communicate with the flight controller and onboard sensors. In the data collection process, we used four UWB tags on the ground and one on the UAV. As the drone flies, the sensors send their distances to the drone in real time. The goal is to find the position of the drone by this sensor data. The system calibration consists of four stages. Time synchronization. All the sensors employed in the Q-Drone system collect the data in their own clocks. To synchronize the data collected by different sensors, all the sensors should adjust their clocks to a reference clock so that they can use the same time reference. To achieve this goal, we use the NUC time as a reference clock to regulate the reference of other clocks. Displacement calibration. The figure illustrates three coordinate frames, UAV body frame, UWB network frame, and totalization frame. The UWB network frame was used as our base frame coordinate system and other frames were translated to the origin of UWB network frame. Height calibration. The height data provided by the IMU is the relative height from its initial position, which depends on the first location of the UAV at the beginning of the flight. This translation was conducted by implementing a translation between the IMU height data and totalization Z measurement. Range calibration. A range calibration is required for approximating the raw range measurement obtained with the UWB sensors to the ground route range data acquired by the robotic total station. A small deviation between the raw range data and ground truth measure in the same local coordinate system might exist. This range deviation might be due to systematic or non-systematic errors induced by differences between two sensor systems, flight environments, and sensor configurations. Thus, the raw range data needs to be calibrated with the range correction coefficients. These coefficients are available for the users on the website. Most of UAV positioning algorithms rely on computer vision-based odometry or GNSS signals. However, these methods might face some difficulties due to undesirable illumination, textureless environments, signal blockage in indoor environments, and multipass of reflected signals. On the other hand, some research groups have proposed range-based techniques such as extended Kalman filter, multidimensional scaling, triangulation, and trilateration. In this study, we implemented a multilateration positioning algorithm based on time of arrival as a baseline positioning model for validating the quality of the benchmark dataset. The methodology breakdown of structure is as follows, that you can see in this picture. First, the sensor's data, including UWB tags and IMU, are fed to the algorithm. Then, we have one pre-processing filtering that goes to the main algorithm. The green block is the main positioning block, the multilateration. According to this algorithm, for more than two reference points, the position is the solution of the shown equation, which consists of a particular and a homogeneous system. Then the optimization. To overcome problems like multipad and non-line-of-sight signals and refining the solution, we use the Levenberg market optimization algorithm. The multilateration answer has been used as an initial point for this optimization problem. Also, IMU data can make the solution to be converged, so it is considered in the objective function. Two filtering stages in the position estimation has been done. One in the beginning is for the removing outliers of raw range data, and one at the end is for removing estimated position outliers. The table presents a summary of the benchmark data acquired by QDrone system. The benchmark datasets consist of free motion in indoor environment, a square and zigzag pattern in an outdoor field, a scanning the walls of an outdoor building, sweeping the ceiling under a bridge, and a scanning walls of a tunnel. QDrone acquired total 23 flight datasets over five test sites, around 790 square meters, by traveling about 4.3 kilometers during one hour and 50 minutes. In this benchmark, a total of 
250,000 UWB data were acquired together with total 300,000 IMU heights and 600,000 IMU data. In addition, total 20,000 ground truths of range data was measured with the robotic total station. We applied the baseline positioning algorithm to the range corrected benchmark datasets after outlier were removed. We used mean absolute error MAE to measure the error between the baseline positioning results and ground truths. As shown in the table, the baseline algorithms achieved 0.74 meter MAE over the five sites using the benchmark datasets. Filled bridge and indoor sites show less than one meter of positioning accuracy, while building and tunnel achieved relatively larger errors. The videos show representative trajectories selected for each site, which are computed by the baseline positioning algorithm. The blue dot shows the computed trajectory and the red dot shows the ground truth. There are certain instances that the UWB tag might fail to receive the UWB range signal from one of the four anchors due to signal blockage, body occlusion, and sensor failure. In this case, the positioning solution can be solved with tree ranging data. Also, in some datasets, we observed that at a certain height, the data shows a significant shift in range. We found that this range shift is caused by the well-known multipath issue when UWB signals are reflected by walls. It explains the larger MAE in building and tunnel datasets. Here is the result of one of the datasets from the bridge site. The green dots are the anchors located on the ground. The red dot is the ground truth and the blue dot is the computed trajectory by multilateration positioning method. The Q-Drone benchmark datasets acquired over the five sites are publicly available via benchmark website in the shown website address. This benchmark website will provide sensor datasets, that is UWB ranging data and IMU, and also calibration parameters. The benchmark users can submit the result of their own positioning methods. The benchmark website will evaluate the performance of the submitted positioning result based on the reference positioning data of UAV tracked with the robotic total station. The evaluation results will be informed to the users. Here is the conclusion. In this research, we present the QDRON UWB benchmark datasets for supporting UAV positioning research works. The QDRON system was designed for positioning a UAV platform using UWB sensors in various types of GNSS denied environments, including indoor, open field, close to buildings, underneath the bridge, and semi open tunnel. The QDRON system acquired the IMU and UWB data, which were time synchronized. Also, the ground truth of UAV positioning was acquired by tracking a mini prism mounted on the UAV platform with a robotic totalization. An extrinsic sensor calibration between IMU and UWB tag and between UWB anchors and the robotic totalization was conducted. Also, the coefficients of range correction between raw range data and its ground truths were estimated. To validate the quality of the benchmark datasets, we implemented the multilateration positioning algorithm with Levenberg market optimization as well as the consensus-based filtering algorithm to remove range outliers. The QDRON benchmark data will be publicly available through the benchmark website for supporting UAV positioning research works using UWB range data. We expect the provided benchmark datasets will contribute to the identification of the limitation of positioning methods under development and the validation of its performance in diverse real environments. Thanks for your listening and also I want to thank the QDRON team and all the people who supported us in this research.